cinematics are so easy to make. Nobody ever said that. The truth is, if you are a CG artist and you want to make cinematic looking renders, there's a long journey of constant learning. I don't consider myself as an expert cinematographer or virtual producer, but I think I've learned a couple of things that could help you to not make the same rookie mistakes that everyone including me have made. And you can use all the tips and suggestions that I'm gonna tell you even if you don't use Unreal Engine as your main 3D software. This video is gonna be split in three parts. In the first part of this video, we will talk about the camera settings that I recommend you to use when you render your 3D scene. The second part is about adding post-editing effects. And the third part of this video, it's about finding inspiration and learning from movies, photography and actually cinematography. This also is the first part of three videos that I'm planning to make, talking about enhancing your renders in Unreal Engine. The next couple of videos will be about the best render settings in your movie render queue and how to make render passes in Unreal Engine for better composition. So if you want to learn everything about rendering in Unreal Engine, well consider subscribing to the channel. But if you want to see those videos right now, I have a secondary channel where I've already made those videos. That channel is in Spanish though, but those videos have custom subtitles so you can active them and translate it to English and you're ready to go. So guys, let's get started with the camera settings. Now we're gonna work on the Unreal Engine 5 Cinema Camera. If you use another 3D rendering program, I suggest you to search of the equivalence in terms of camera settings. The first thing I recommend you to set from scratch in every Unreal Engine project are the auto exposure and the post process effect. One of the easiest way to disable every post process effect is using the post process volume. Scroll down and check the unbound button. That way, every change you make it's gonna affect the entire level. Now we scroll where it says exposure and then we're gonna check these options. After that, we scroll a little bit and we're gonna make sure to disable the bloom, chromatic aberration, vignette, film grain and lens flares. All these effects are better to add them in post editing. We need to render the cleanest shot possible. Once you have your project clean of any effect, now we're gonna configure the camera that we're gonna use. Here's the first tip for you to take note. A lot of movies in the industry were filmed with anamorphic lenses. I am definitely not the right person to explain you what an anamorphic lens is or how it works, but surely I can tell you how it looks. You're gonna notice that in films, when the camera is really close to a person or an object, you'll notice that the background is out of focus, but pay attention to the light spots. You're gonna see that these lights are kinda oval, and that is one of the effects that these type of lenses produce and we want to replicate. So currently in Unreal Engine 5.2, there's not an official way to make it. In the next 5.3 version, Epic Games is gonna introduce it in the engine, so this one I'm gonna show you might change in the near future. I'm gonna do a video showing you the new way to make the anamorphic lenses, so be sure to be subscribed to the channel. Until that, we're gonna select our camera, look for the squeeze factor, and set it to 2. Now we have to scroll down where it says crop, and we set this into 16.9 to go back to the previous aspect ratio. But doing this, if we set the background out of focus, we're gonna see that the light shapes are oval now. Speaking about aspect ratio, we are really used to the 16.9. You know, the size of almost every monitor, phone screens, and a big majority of the YouTube videos. But films tend to use a different aspect ratio, which is around 2.39, and this is equivalent to 21.29. As you can see, changing the cropping settings, we can set it into 2.39, and that way our shot looks wider with a proper film size. Then we have to configure the proper lens type and size starting with the filming DSLR lens and try to use a focal length around 50mm and 120mm for closer shots. The proper focal length depends on your scene. But a quick tip is that if you have characters in your shot, it's better to use long lenses to focus all the attention on your characters. And for landscapes, wider lenses are commonly used, around 15mm and 30mm. But remember that everything depends on what you want to focus. And now the frame rate. It's known that video games usually runs in 60 frames per second. TV shows runs at 30, but films are reproduced in 24. And that's it because of the motion blur. 
William Faucher is an amazing YouTuber, phenomenal Unreal producer and a great guy explained perfectly this point on his video how to make Unreal look more cinematic. And using his example, the 16 frames per second clip looks sharper, but it feels like a video game. And if we look at the 24 FPS clip, we will see that it looks better in terms of CGI animation. I recommend you 100% to go and check it out the William Faucher's YouTube channel. If you are a Unreal Engine user, you won't regret it. Okay, now that we have deactivated the post-process effect, set the anamorphic lens, set the right lens size, set the right aspect ratio, and made our camera animation 24 FPS, now it's time to render. In the past, I've made a video on my main channel about my render settings in Unreal Engine. That video is in Spanish, but it has custom subtitles, so you can switch them to English and you will understand every step of the tutorial. But I'm planning to make an English version of that video soon. In a few words, activate the movie render queue in the plugin section, and here you have to set the frame rate and resolution of your clip. Remember that we changed the aspect ratio? Now we also have to change the output resolution from 1920 to 1080p to 1920 and 803 for a 1080p resolution. But what if we want to change the resolution from 1080p to 2K, 4K or 8K? Well, you just have to make the maths. Okay, of course not! And I have for you an awesome solution for that problem. The people of wearethefire.com made a complete compilation of every aspect ratio existing in every resolution from 720p to 16k. So that way you just have to look for the aspect ratio that you are using, select the resolution, copy the numbers of the height and width pixels, and we are ready to render. Now we have to talk about the post-editing effects that we have to consider for our clips. Things like color grading, chromatic aberration, film grains, bloom, lens flares, and a lot more of things that are gonna make our shots shine. Soon I'll be making a proper video tutorial about color grading and all post-editing effects. But right now the best advice that I can give you is be subtle. Please avoid cracking up too much your effects and oversaturate your scene with, with lens flares, bloom and all the stuff that I mentioned. To put it into a step by step process, I would say that you can start from a color grading scene, then using mask try to hide or highlight some areas of interest. After that add a little bit of bloom or lens flares if it's necessary, some chromatic aberration on overexposed areas only, then add a vignette and finally add a little bit of film grain to tie everything up. This is a quick view about everything necessary for a post-production level. You can make it as simple or as complex as you want, and actually that's part of your creative process. And last but not least, just remember that everything is a remix. We can watch what has been done in the past for inspiration or learning. And call me crazy, but I think that if you want to make cinematics, you kinda have to know about cinematography, right? As I said in the beginning of the video, I don't consider myself as an expert cinematographer or photographer, but I truly try to learn a little bit more every day. And now guys, I want to share with you some of the platforms and websites that I usually use to learn and find some inspiration about cinematography, camera movements, effects, transitions, types of shots, that it's gonna make my renders a little bit more interesting. So here are my top 5 websites to learn cinematography. In the fifth place, we have shotdecked.com. This one is by far the best website to learn about cinematography, because every shot register here has everything little detail on its description, like which camera was used, the name of the camera movement, the lenses, color description, lighting, composition, and much more. I put it in the fifth place only because you need to pay a subscription to have all the information available. But if you want some free alternatives, we're gonna go with the fourth place with filmgrab.com. This website started as an independent blog which grew to the page that we have now. I love that you can search movies by its directors, cinematographers and artists. It has a decent number of movie screenshots and information considering that this is an indie project. Next we have shot.cafe. Here you can find and submit interesting screenshots from movies and commercials, and also sort them by tags, colors, objects, descriptions, and along etc. 
In second place we have Flimp.ai. Here also you can find film screenshots, but here you can search them by all the different camera aspects like frame size, aspect ratio, characters in the scene and a lot more. And finally in the first place we have iCandy.co. In this website you can find examples of every existing camera movement, film techniques, transitions, effects, breakdown and a lot more. And there are not only screenshots, you can also find videos and GIFs to demonstrate how all these camera movements and effects should look like. Definitely one of the best web pages to find inspiration and learn about filmmaking that I know. So that's it guys, I think that I've covered everything that I wanted to know when I started in Unreal Engine and actually the 3D world in general. Just remember that this is a journey of constant learning and practicing and I truly encourage you guys to make stuff, practice a little bit every day, learn about cameras, cinematography, direction, composition, all those things are gonna make your renders a little bit more interesting, a little bit more professional and I personally think that those are the basis of a good render. Which part do you think is the most important for you? Do you know any more blogs or websites to find inspiration or learning about cinematography? I want to read all your comments down below. And now that you're down there, click the like button if you liked the video or if you learned something new today. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so you don't miss any of the new videos that we upload. You can support this channel sharing this video with the people that you think that this information could be helpful. Follow us on our social networks like Facebook, Instagram and TikTok, as well as on my Instagram, TikTok and Spotify accounts. Thank you so much guys for all your support to this channel, I love all the nice comments that you leave down here in the comment sections, thank you very much for all the support. And remember that this is XVS Studio Cinematica, and I'll see you on the next video.